One of the easiest improvements to our traffic problems has been hiding in plain sight, North King Street. You might think you are familiar with North King Street between Middle Street and downtown, but did you know that it changes width 23 different times during its two mile length? It widens from two lanes to four lanes to five lanes to six lanes and then narrows again up and down. Most of King Street has six lanes, but parking is allowed all day, effectively reducing this wide pavement to a four lane road with two lanes in each direction. And this often gets further reduced to one inbound lane due to cars waiting to turn left or a bus stop blocking the right lane. When a bus tries to leave the bus stop, it's often blocked by rows of parked cars and then has to cut in to the traffic lane, slowing down the flow of traffic. King never does experience six actual lanes of through traffic, which is a waste of a precious transportation resource. However, North King could very easily be made six lanes throughout the entire length and with proper management, four of those lanes can flow together in the rush hour direction. This would provide a major enhancement for traffic coming in from the leeward side with much better results than building a train at perhaps 2% of the expense. And these improvements could be done quickly, providing immediate relief. North King Street begins at Oahu's worst traffic bottleneck, the dreaded Middle Street intersection where it exits the freeway just before the crunch. An improved North King could provide an alternate route to get around this critical choke point and zip travelers to downtown in minutes. Relatively minor construction and sensible planning could more than double King's capacity, providing a new lane for express bus and carpools while better serving local traffic and helping relieve the burden on H1. The frequent choke points where the road narrows are caused by simple obstructions, including parking lots, overly wide sidewalks, empty dirt yards, garbage dumpsters, storage spaces, and curb extensions. Road space is further wasted by the arbitrary way that lanes are painted on the surface. Sometimes a lane is striped very wide, taking up one and a half or even two actual lanes. At other places, there is a useless keep out zone painted in the median where cars are prohibited without any apparent safety purpose. Nearly all of the widening suggested here involves relatively easy lane additions and there will still be excellent sidewalks for the entire length of the renewed street. Let's make it six lanes all the way and prohibit parking during rush hour. These six unobstructed lanes could then be put to the best use by our creative traffic engineers. Considering the directional flow in the morning inbound and the afternoon outbound, it would perhaps be most efficient to have four lanes coming in during rush hour and then four lanes going out in the afternoon, easily controlled with removable traffic cones and synchronized traffic lights. The two center lanes can be reversible, morning inbound, afternoon outbound. And during non-peak times, the lanes flow as usual, three in each direction with parking allowed. This would provide four lanes in the rush hour direction. The left lane is for turning and passing, and then you have a lane for express bus and carpool, and the third lane is for local traffic, and the fourth lane at the curb is for local traffic and the local bus stops and right turns. King Street would now have a true dedicated bus lane, also for HOV carpools, with a tremendous capacity of 10,000 people per hour that would revolutionize our daily commute. For example, maximum capacity of rail is just 6,000 people. Most of them will be standing up during a rail commute, whereas 10,000 people per hour can be transported in a bus lane, mostly sitting down in comfortable seats. This can be part of a new approach to comprehensive traffic solutions for Honolulu with similar kinds of innovative measures on our other streets. With this approach, we don't need to build an elevated train. We've got enough capacity on our existing streets if we manage them properly. An official corridor traffic study is urgently needed to sort this matter out and develop an engineering solution as soon as possible. One obvious quick improvement to King Street would be banning parking at rush hour. How would you feel about having an express bus lane on King Street?
That would be great. It would go a lot faster. So you wouldn't get stuck in traffic. Exactly. Right now it's congested. Yes, it is. What if we prohibit rush hour parking? Especially on this side right here, I think that would uh, expedite a little bit faster if there wasn't any uh, cars that are parked on the side at the rush hour. The work to create this project would provide good jobs for our local construction industry, building an extremely useful product at relatively little expense or environmental impact. No major trees would be cut down and very little actual change to the structure of the neighborhood would have to take place. King Street needs planning and care instead of being ignored the way it has been for decades, as much of Kalihi has been generally neglected. This modernized North King Street would seriously enhance commuter traffic while also creating an improvement to the quality of life for the people of Kalihi that would increase their mobility, revive retail businesses, and stimulate pride in a renewed neighborhood. These improvements to North King Street are not going to fix all of our traffic problems, obviously, but they really could make a significant contribution. And it really just shows how our city streets have been neglected by previous administrations who seem to have been overly focused or obsessed with building a train and not paying any attention to the rest of our traffic issues. There are many streets in the city that could be improved and really help our traffic flow. And it could be done cheaply and quickly. With this affordable and common sense approach, we don't need to spend $6 billion on a train. And now we're going to take a detailed look at North King Street and show you how disorganized and obstructed this important road is today. Currently, North King Street is six lanes wide for most of its length. However, parking is allowed on both sides, so that reduces the actual width to four lanes. This is very inefficient use of a major thoroughfare, especially at rush hour. So now we're going to take a close look at this road and then we're going to examine how it could be improved and better serve our traffic situation in Honolulu. North King Street exits from the freeway right before the Middle Street intersection and it goes for about two miles into downtown and we're going to find it goes from four lanes to six lanes to five lanes back to four lanes. It keeps changing in width so it's not as useful as it could be. North King Street can very easily become six lanes for the entire length. North King has just two lanes at the start, then quickly widens to four lanes, and then six upon reaching Umi Street. It continues wide until just past Mokawaya Street, seven blocks later, where it narrows to five lanes. It remains narrow for the next four blocks until reaching Kalihi Street. This narrowing is caused by a very wide sidewalk a garbage dumpster, some parking lots, with no actual buildings in the way. It would be relatively simple to add a lane here and move the utility poles. Beyond Kalihi Street in the long block passing Farrington High School, King breezes along as six lanes, but a lane of parked cars reduces this to five. At the intersection with Huff Tailing, it is still six lanes, but striped as five lanes, with the very wide right turn lane that two lanes of cars usually squeeze into. Yet another example of the inefficient, thoughtless planning of this roadway. The intersection on the other side of Hofkelling is partly blocked by an old wooden building on the Makai side that juts into the roadway, taking up a lane and obstructing traffic. This is one of only two small old wooden structures that probably need to be removed for the widening project. Not bad for a complete two-mile enhanced corridor. A major bus stop is just beyond the building, and yet buses have to snake and twist their way around the protrusion to reach the curb. Beyond Hoftailing, things get rather chaotic for a couple of blocks, becoming, in turn, six lanes, five, six, five, six, and then five lanes wide. You can understand this bizarre irregularity a little better from an aerial perspective. 
The width changes are caused by several curb and sidewalk extensions, which do nothing but create a couple more free parking spaces. A paved lane on the Malka side hosts a garbage dumpster and an unused parking lot remnant. None of this makes any sense. Just after this at Walter Lane, we've got about five and a half lanes, but suddenly the road narrows to four lanes when it reaches Long and Mao lanes. This restriction is caused on the Makai side by yet another widening of the sidewalk, this time used by an automobile repair shop to double park cars and store their dumpster. The Mauka side obstruction is perhaps the strangest of all blockages on North King. It's a short block of diagonal parking fronting the shops that juts into the street right of way. It's like a little stretch of quaint New England village with angled parking, convenient for customers, but not very appropriate for downtown Honolulu. When it becomes four lanes, there's a real problem if somebody is making a left turn, as you see here. There's only one lane available for through traffic. At the end of this four lane block, King jumps back out to six lanes. But one block later, at Morris Lane, we are back to five. Fortunately, the bridge across Kapalama Canal is six lanes, so that avoids any serious reconstruction. We continue another couple of blocks at six wide until reaching the Palama Fire Station at Austin Lane where it's back to five lanes for the block at Tamashiro Fish Market. Part of the narrowing on the Malka side here is due to a residential front yard, a dirt lot used for parking cars. After this at Kaumakapili Church, we are back out to six, but then two blocks later at Pool Lane, you guessed it, back to five. This narrowing of the street is created once again by an arbitrary extension of the sidewalk which here is littered with abandoned shopping carts and with a small used car lot at the corner of a Kepo Lane. The Makai side then expands to three lanes, but the Malka half of King goes down to two lanes because of a parking lot and a storage area for slabs of marble. Not a very important use of land for a main road in our primary urban center. In the final block before Liliha Street, we are back out to six lanes. And then King rolls into downtown where it meets Baratania Street at Aala Park, briefly enjoying a grand combined width of 12 lanes. This has been a ridiculous ride. North King Street needs to be fixed. Our noble King has been ignored, neglected, abused, and underused. Now it's time to correct this problem. A revitalized North King Street can help fix our leeward traffic problem and also provide a better quality of life for the people of Kalihi.